Sorry, dear friends, for stepping on your lines. I'll be more careful next time. Happy Easter to you all. Easter. Holy Week and Easter is, is a great time for the props of our faith. There's so many things that we have that, that help us who are visual learners to understand what's going on. Beginning way back on Palm Sunday, there are the palms that remind us of how loudly we'll shout when the crowd really riles us up, but how quickly our faith can dry up and turn into nothing more than what's good for burning for ashes. There's the perfume that Mary of Bethany pours on the feet of Jesus at the last dinner that he has with Mary and Martha and Lazarus, the symbol of the extravagance of God, the, the, the abundance that God will desire to pour on each one of us, and that we in turn are called to pour out for the sake of God's mission in the world. And there's the foot washing on Monday, Thursday, when Jesus is saying to us, the, giving us an example of the way that we are supposed to to serve one another, very humbly, very simply, never overlooking the smallest thing we might do and how much God is in even that tiny little thing, how much blessing may come by it. And there's the bread and the wine of the Last Supper, the Eucharist, that reminds us that God feeds us every day in every moment, whatever may come to confront us in our lives, God strengthens us to be able to meet those needs again and again in small ways, something so simple and so tiny and yet so powerful. There's the cross of Good Friday, the symbol that is meant to be death and yet is not, symbol of God stretching out God's arms to embrace the entire world, even in a moment of loss and death. And then today there is the empty tomb. It's the scene of, of much of the action this morning. Everybody seems to show up at the tomb at some point today. In all four Gospels, the women who have been following Jesus come to the tomb to try to do this, this last service for him. What at, eight, at 6 a.m. this morning I described as a dirty job, but nonetheless a very holy one. In various versions of the story, one or another of Jesus' other followers come. Sometimes it's Peter, sometimes it's Peter and John. In another version of the story, Joseph of Arimathea comes. Maybe he comes with or without Nicodemus. There are guards in the Matthew version of the story. All these people are around this empty object of death that no longer is an object of death, at least for those of us. This morning, we also come and stand before it. And surely, we must be just as amazed as Jesus' original followers were, maybe more so. We who live in the age of science, we know how the world works. We know that God set everything in motion in a particular way, and it continues. Everything dies. That's just the way the world works. You and I die. Everyone and everything dies. And Jesus did too. It's an important thing to remember today. It's not like this was God's magic trick. Jesus died, and yet it was not a period on the sentence, but rather a comma. Somehow the story only really begins today as we turn and walk away from the empty tomb. It recedes from the story very quickly. We never hear about it again. Something begins today that will continue tomorrow, the next day, every day of our lives. Easter is not an event. It is a way of living. But before we leave the tomb, just one more time, it's worth it to turn around and walk into it. It may seem like a very strange thing to do, and yet I think that once we are in it, we will recognize that most of us, indeed all of us, at some time in our lives, indeed at many times in our lives, find ourselves in tombs, tombs of doubt and despair, of loss, of uncertainty, all of the things that go wrong in our lives, all of the deaths in our lives, all of the sorrow, all of the pain. And when we find ourselves in those situations, it can seem like an awfully solid space that we're in. As long as we stay facing into the tomb, all we see are the three solid walls. But if we will just turn around, we will discover that the stone has already rolled back, been rolled back. 
The way out was always right there. That's part of the beauty of the story. The women show up at the tomb and find that the stone has already been rolled back. There's no mechanical thing going on. It's not like they have to wait while somebody does it. It was already gone. In some cosmic sense of, of God's time, it was always rolled back. And so it is for you and for me in our own lives. All of those tombs that we find ourselves in, if we will only turn around, God has already shown us the way out. God has triumphed over death. How can anything else withstand the power of God? Our own loss, our own despair the adversities of this world, the resistance that we seem to face in proclaiming the kingdom of God, in bringing the kingdom of God to those who truly need to hear it. The way out is always there. And once we see that, dear friends, we also recognize that the other things that seemed like the three solid walls never really were all that solid either. That is the glory of this day. God has triumphed and triumphs completely over everything. Death was the world's last, last best shot. It always works. It always silences anything and anyone. But today, it proves not to be strong enough. God's victory over death is complete. What else? Will God not knock down in our own lives? What else? What other false idols? The things that we fear the most will God not defeat? God has triumphed over death. Nothing else can stand. There is only one other thing for us to do, and that is to say, Alleluia. So it is, dear friends, there is hardly anything to preach today. God has done all the heavy lifting. You and I are freed from all of that which has held us captive, all that which has walled us in, all those stones that appeared to be rolled before us. They're gone, rolled back. You and I are freed to proclaim what it is God has done for you and for me and for the whole world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. No, 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 no. Proclaiming, proclaiming. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.